the volume of water during the Exodus. And I really want to emphasize the issue here is volume. Because I don't think most people have really sat down and done the math. And the math is amazing when you start realizing what's going to really go on. Now, if the Exodus is around six, we know 603,550 fighting men from Numbers, and I'm going to estimate that the total group is around 2.5 million, but it could be 3 million, it could be 2 million, but we'll estimate 2.5 million. How much water does the average person drink per day? Right now, it's 0.92 gallons. 0.92 gallons. So, during the Exodus, while we're going through this desert environment, which is hilarious that the idea it is a desert, he is providing just for the people 2.3 million gallons. Now that's just the drinking. Okay. Now there are some verses here which we'll get into, which will explain this a little further. But he, you know, everything is done as a test for us. Water and manna. So let's look at those for the verses for a second and we'll get back to how much greater he's going to do this. Okay? In Deuteronomy 8.3, this has to deal with food. Be hum he humbled you, causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Food. We're going to go without, you know, until we cross over. You know, cross over to the Red Sea. Then he'll start providing manna. Ex as to water, Exodus 15, 22. Then met Moses led Israel from Red the Red Sea, and they went to the desert of Shur. For three days they traveled in the desert without finding water. So after that testing of going without, then he's going to provide. He just wants to see who's going to grumble. And I'm going to show you how much bigger this gets. Okay? Because it's not just the water we drink. We're going to be having animals with us. Well, how much does a cow drink? In that type of desert environment, I'm going to safely estimate 25 gallons a day per cow. Just in Midian. Just in Midian. Just the start of it. Basically what I would consider maybe the first week of the battles. We're going to pick up 72,000 cows. That's 1.8 million gallons of water just for the cows to drink, just per day, just for those in Midian as we continue to get more cows. Sheep and goats, about two gallons, unless they're milking, which would require more, much more water. Just in Midian, we're going to pick up 675,000 sheep and goats. That's 1.35 gallons, million gallons of water. And again, that's numbers 31. So, just from the animals from Midian, not including what we bring with us from Exodus, and just our drinking, just our drinking, is almost five and a half million gallons per day. That doesn't include all the other animals, doesn't include the slave girls that we can pick, continue to pick up, and all those, again, all the extra animals. And here's where it gets really interesting. How are you going to make your manna into bread? Don't you use water? So we're going to use water for baking too. Uh-oh, that really starts moving this needle up. And what about for bathing? Uh-oh, because we got to bathe, we got to wash our clothes too, so it really starts pegging that needle. And as the water comes out of the ground, how much goes back into the ground? Or just get, you know, if, if the ground is wet as mud, are you going to drink out the wet mud? I mean, he's going to be providing water at just incredible rates. Now, let's think of it this way. <clears throat> Just from the drinking that I discussed before, uh, 5.45 5 million gallons of water. It's only 660,000 gallons in an Olympic-sized swimming pool. So that's 8.2 swimming pools, Olympic-sized swimming pools of water per day just on drinking. That doesn't include everything else. That doesn't include the water going back down to the ground or anything and fertilizing the water. Nothing like that. Just that of volume of water. Now, I am a person who's had a swimming pool, and I filled it, and I filled it with a fire hydrant. I can tell you right now that you cannot do this with a fire hydrant in a day. 
So when you think of the water pouring out, you know, when you think of Moses when he struck the rock and water, he says water gushed out. We're not talking about gushing like this, shooting out like a little, something like this. We're talking water gushing out like this or bigger. It's not a small little rock. I mean, we're talking about at least, at minimum, basically a 12-inch pipe, which under massive pressure to get that amount of water out. I mean, it's just, we're talking totally gushing water of what he's going to do. So now that we see what our requirements are, now that we've seen that from Torah, let's look at some issues on the Exodus as it pertains to this. Isaiah 4, 6. You know, he's talking about the covering um, of the, the fire by night and the, um, the cloud by day. And it, verse 6, it will be a shelter and shade from the heat of the day and a refuge and hiding place from the storm and the rain. So around us is storm and rain, so heavy rains around us. Why is that? Because we have our animals outside the camps and they need that water. So what's he do? He provides. Okay, he provides that water. He's going to provide their food. Now again, that's an aspect of grass and trees for them, or gr grass and bushes for the goats. Uh, goats are more on bushes. Most of the other things are on grass. So let's look at Isaiah 41, starting in verse 8. But you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, who, who I have chosen, you descendants of Abraham, my friend. 9. I took you from the ends of the earth, uh-oh, it sounds like an exodus, from its furthest corners I have called you. I said, you are my servant. I have chosen you and have not rejected you. Verse 10, so do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Now, this is continuing in that same chapter. Just want to kind of show we're talking about the exodus. Isaiah 41, 17. The poor and the needy search for water, but there is none. Uh-oh, well, watch this. Their tongues are parched with thirst. What did we say with Deuteronomy? You know, they are, no, Exodus, when they were the three days for uh, water were Exodus. <clears throat> so you got to get thirsty first, so he hears you. Or he, I, he already knew. He just wanted to test you. But your, the, I, the Lord, will answer them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. Verse 18, I will make rivers flow on barren heights and springs within the valleys. I will turn the desert into pools of water and the parched ground into springs. I will put in the desert the cedar and the acacia and the myrtle and the olive. I will set junipers in the wasteland, the fir and the cypress together, so that the people may see and know and may consider and understand that the hand of the Lord has done this, that the Holy One of Israel has created it. Now, that's powerful. We don't even need to go any further, but the Messiah bangs it home. Matthew 6, 25. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink. Eat or drink, Exodus. Or about your body and what you will wear. Uh-oh, he says, the clothes don't wear out and our, shoot, and our sandals don't wear out. Is life not more than food and the body more than clothes? He's going to provide. He's taking care of these issues. Now, there are some things we have to take care of, but man, is he, is he overloading this. And again, this is a desert environment, and he's going to say, I'm taking you into the desert where you basically there's no way for that many people to live. Two and a half million people trying to walk through. There's no way they have the water supply there now. That's where it's hilarious. That's where we know it is our creator that comes in and takes care of the whole thing because only he can do this. Only he can provide that amount of water in the desert. Wherever we go, that water will follow. Now, when I say wherever we go, remember, we have a path during the Exodus. And Monty Judah will tell you, you know, they camp 41 times. And, of course, we can find that on Torah as well. They camp 41 times during the Exodus, which means we'll camp 41 times. So... While the warriors go out, they come back. It's just what it is. They go out and they come back. But again, they have to wash. He provides that water every single day. Uh, you don't have to wash your clothes. He's going to provide that water. Not a worry. I mean, we're talking millions and millions of gallons in a desert. That's our creator. And that's what we're looking forward to.